have seen the worst And there is nothing left for me to hate So I can lay me down My brothers on the ground I bled today until Coyote comes to raise me up Hello everybody, welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast brought to you by the Scottish Rugby Blog. I am Cammy Black. Um, we've got a fair bit to get through this evening because there's, there's, uh, all the rugby has started now, which is good. Uh, not that we've been not that we've been like trawling the depths trying to get content for the last few weeks, but it's, it's, it's kind of <laughs> nice to have be in a position where we're going to struggle to get through everything tonight anyway. Uh, joining me to uh, dredge... The, the depths of Scottish rugby this evening. We've got John Anderson. Good evening, John. Good evening, Cam. Good evening, everyone that's uh, listening live. And uh, good evening to everyone who's downloaded this later in the week. Yeah, and, and good evening, Craig. We've got Craig, Craig Manson with us as well. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, all. And uh, just as John says, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you are, as, as both have said, if you are um, watching us live, um, Please feel free to join in in the comments, and we'll pick them up as we go along. Um, we've got Dougie Low watching us. Uh, good evening to Dougie. Um, yeah, chip in, and and we'll pick up any any comments that we uh, we we that catch our eye. Um, so you can watch us live, and then watch back on places like Twitch, uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, and YouTube. Um, you can also download the podcast afterwards as an audio download on Acast, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can say, and this is going to not because I know this works, um, Alexa, play Scottish Rugby Podcast. <laughs> and I've just set up everyone's Alexa there because I know that I, we've had complaints about me doing that in the past. But I, yes. I'll, you'll have to do it. Um, so, yeah, you can listen to uh, Catch Us Anywhere does, does podcasts. Um, you can also sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast for uh, exclusive bonus weekly content now so what we do we do this regular podcast now that we're doing now where we cover the main bits of news main talking points from the weekend's games um and then we we try and keep that in between the 40 minute to a one hour mark and then we say goodbye to our uh, our, our, our listeners who listen on the regular podcast and we then do a, a separate little podcast where we get a little bit sweary a little bit ranty we do hands in the ruck and we have a little bit of chat about rugby related and, and other things that have just kind of got our goat that week and it's <laughs> lots of good fun so patrons get that so the, you can get that for from three pounds a month you can pay five pounds a month and you you get in the doogie donley members lounge which means you get get your name right out on the podcast so we haven't had anybody sign up to the doogie donley members lounge this week so i've got no names to read out but thank you very much for those people who have signed up for the three pounds a month hopefully you're in hopefully you're enjoying uh enjoying the little wee extra podcast we're putting out we are planning on doing some some other stuff for Patreons in the coming weeks and months. There have been hiccups along the way outside of the podcast. I'm taking my youngest son for his second PCR test in two weeks tomorrow morning. Uh, so that that's those are the kinds of things that get in the way of us uh, being able to kind of put, put out some additional stuff as well. But that's by the by. We've got rugby to talk about. Um, shall we start off then with uh, Scotland versus Spain? So this is the qualification for the Rugby World Cup 2021. Um, 
unbelievably, and I looked at the table for this because I was thinking it's like Scotland have got Ireland on Saturday. Um, and I thought, oh, I wonder, I haven't really kind of kept up with how Ireland had done um, in the tournament and found that they lost their opening game to Spain. Scotland have now mm. beaten Spain with a bonus try point, try bonus point. I think Ireland beat Spain with a try bonus uh, point. Italy. Uh, and Italy, yeah. And yep. so everybody's beaten everybody with a try bonus point. So everybody's on five points on the league table <laughs> going into this weekend. Having said that, Scotland, the, the points difference is quite, it makes quite difficult reading for Scotland. Scotland, the bottom in the pool, they, they, their points difference is minus 20, then it's Spain minus four, Ireland are on plus seven, and Italy are on plus 17. So. I can't. Is it? Do, you, do either of you know? Because I was trying to f- figure this out. Because the you know the Rugby World Cup twenty twenty one website is very scant on details. Is it the top team that automatically then qualifies for the World Cup? Do we know, or is it the top two? Because I know that there's still there's still the repechage. It's a lovely word to go after this. So this isn't this this isn't fatal for Scotland's qualification chances if they don't qualify. But is it? I'm a, I'm aware that it's that from what I've been. From what the press have been talking about and what I've I've looked at, and John, my John is scro- scrolling away there at the moment, so he uh, may sure correct I me. But I would reckon I I am under the impression if Scotland beat Ireland this weekend, they uh, they qualify. So um, you know uh, that's what I've been told. But I you know I uh, it, that's always good when going. He's yeah, so, so he's... focused on that research. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even speak while he types. Can't do two things at once. No, that's uh, no. There's there's no multitasking here. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, abs- absolutely. Like, it, as far as as far as we know, which is not very much in this case, um, a win will secure Scotland the place at the World Cup. That's that's what we know. Um, yeah. A defeat How, right. could be okay. Problematic. So... Yes, let me have a look and see what we've got for Rugby World, as always, um, is here to help us. A uh, big shout out to Alan Dimmick, uh, formerly off the blog, who does who who who's um the features editor on there. But they've they've got a they've got an informer, a little kind of like all you need to know about it. Uh, but it doesn't tell me. <laughs> so it's not it's not all I need to know about this, Alan Dimmick. It's, um, it's not the easiest thing, is it, to, to work out? To work out, no. It, um, yeah, and also there's lots of adverts on here that keep popping up. Um, I've got them as well, yep. They're annoying. Dougie, Dougie Lowe is saying that the top team qualifies second goes into repressage. repressage that's but, uh, prob- that seems to be what the all you need to know on Rugby World. So thank you very much, Dougie, um, Dougie Lowe, uh, for that. I think that, that looks to be that's, the case. See- Seems sensible as well because if you compare yeah. it to other tournaments, it's the top qualifies, the second goes into the playoffs. So, I mean, kind of makes sense. So we think that's we think that's what's happened. I think I was solely <clears throat> relying. I, I wasn't. I think I was thinking at this point. Hopefully, Scotland are doing well because I thought they might do quite well in this tournament, and 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 we're not having to worry too much about it. So we'll take each game the game as it comes. But given that given how tight things are, I've been forced to research this. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and given COVID-related um, mishaps in this house this evening, I haven't had much chance to Google it. Um, so there we go. So first first goes through automatic qualification for the World Cup. Second place will uh, go into the repechage, we believe. Um, so it's, it's Samoa and Colombia who've already come through qualifying. Colombia. Well, there you go. So Who um, knew? Who knew that the, Colombia and, women were... And, uh, the, the final qualification tournament, which is the repechage, as you've said, uh, they will enter the pool A. So the winner of the repechage will win pool. A, will compete in pool A alongside New Zealand, Australia, and Wales. Ouch! That sounds like a pool of death. Oof. Do Wales Ouch. still do women's? Do Wales still do well, women's rugby? Maybe we should um, save that for hands in the rug later on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think from what I can well we're just uh, uh, I was just we saw the uh, you probably saw the information on uh, on online about um, uh, Jasmine Joyce and uh, coming out of um, the GB sevens are going to be finished at the end of this 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 year and uh, and she's going she's going to have to go back to to Wales to play and she's no longer going to be a professional and going to have to find herself another job and uh, it's unbelievable when you say if anybody's <clears> watched this there's a highlight this weekend of the sevens the Wales women's uh, the and it was I thought the clip was going to be that 
somebody had scored a length of the field try because I didn't really, I just thought, oh, this looks like an interesting try. And um, you see the play, the opposition player absolutely sprinting for the line for mm. the life. And you're thinking, well, that's a length of the field try. That That's the kind of clip that would go up on Twitter. And then Jazz Joyce comes from absolutely nowhere, <laughs> manages to snag it before the line and turn around and then jackal the ball and get a turnover. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 sorry. I was going to say, it's now the best defensive cover tackle since Chris Patterson uh, against England in the World Cup in 2011. Um, that's the, that, was, that was the benchmark of fullback cover tackles, and that, that has completely and utterly trumped it. Yeah. Um, Scott, should you say, um, Scotland women are now in the top 10 of the world rankings after that win over Spain. So congratulations Fantastic. to them. Yeah. Um, I don't know where Colombia sit. That's that's interesting. That Colombia are twenty sixth in the world, and I think it's because of the way the the qualif- qualifying sort of thing works. That you know, obviously, you've got to have the opportunity for every area of the world to potentially yes. qualify. So it's it's the old, you know, in the the World Cup in football where you you go into a, you know. Um, I remember Ireland a few years. Did Ireland a few years have to like play against? Iran or something like that, and you know, in like some sort of Australia and some sort of weird qualifier thing, or it was you know these these sort of weird quirks happen. So yeah, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan are currently fifteenth in the world in women's rugby. There's some there's some uh, interesting women's rugby facts for you. Anyway, we're here to talk about Scotland women versus Spain. Anyway, we'll do belters and bams. Um, so this is our new way of kind of going through games that we've watched, particularly the big international games. Um, belters are for the, the, the things that we thought were good. Bams are things that maybe didn't go so well. Um, Craig, what's your kind of what's your belters for for that game? Um, I've I've got a couple, but I'll start off with uh, Helen Nelson. Um, not only oh. not only can she score a lovely try, but what a kicker! Um, she's got a nudge on her. Um, and uh, to score the, um, the the points that she did, obviously um, a big part of the of the of the winning scoreline, um, and she de- deserves um, all the praise that's been heaped on her. She's done a great job. Yeah, no, I, I I thought she was fantastic. The 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 some of the passes this were were just absolutely superb. Um, really quick, really well floated. Was it she? I think she got that. Was her pass to? Was it her pass? No, it was. Um, Smith's pass to um oh, to Megan Gaffney to, to, to Megan, no, Megan Gar- to no. Ronan Lloyd for the Ronan Lloyd ah, right. yeah 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 um but no I I just one of the <clears throat> one of the things thrown at, at women's rugby quite a lot or the, the the mud that is thrown at women's rugby a lot is is the passing can be ponderous um and it was great to see that being turned on its head, um, and uh, and and I I believe that um, uh, I really do believe that people should be watching a lot more women's rugby because women's yeah. rugby is coming through so much and the just interesting games as well and uh, the, the, and there's no there's no um, I can't say the word because I'm not in the uh, I'm not in the Patreon <laughs> but but there's uh, there's no rubbish going on there's no messing around it's 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 yeah it's proper scrums I was going to yeah. say proper scrums. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Easy. I think not, people looking for... go ahead. They're not, so, they're not so reliant on the the physical aspect of the game, so you actually see the skills coming through. You know, you, we've all we've all probably known players through the years who've kind of tried to come up through the age grades, but don't actually have much in the way of skill. They're just a bruiser. You mm. don't get that so much in women's rugby. You get people who can actually play rugby. It's great. Yep, absolutely. John, your belt. Uh, so I've got a bit of a combo belt or an bam. Uh, it's a wee, wee bit of a, okay. a, com, a combo. Uh, so initially, the bam part of it uh, was the way Scot- Scotland initially got beaten up up front uh, quite early on. They were they were really under the cosh. You know, Spain uh, Spain took it to them up front, and they caused them a lot of problems. Uh, which was worrying to see because it's something that has at times crept into Scotland's game in the past. 
The belter, however, is the way they bounce back from that, and absolutely, like they obviously they got a, 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 a the um, rolling mall try right at the end as well, and you know the way they've 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 kind of steadied the ship, they've then taken it to Spain themselves, and it was almost I was watching watching the game, and it was almost like. Yeah, you know, you sometimes see things and you go, right, well, they've got forward dominance. They're going to they're going to run away with this. And then you see the other side win a mall or win a scrum. And you're like, wait a second, can it, is it just that nobody can defend them and they can just all attack them? Is that how, it, how it's going? So I, I thought the, the reaction from that, because, you know, you, you know, when you're under that sort of pressure on the forwards, heads can go down very quickly because you, you're going to be struggling. Um, but I thought absolute credit to them. They, they, they stuck at it. I think we saw signs of that last week, though, didn't we? Because mm. as much as the Italy game, the scoreline looked like it was a walkover. It, it, it absolutely, the game itself, the, the tries were were kind of well taken opportunities by Italy, and mm. as a result, of poor defending by Scotland. But you you couldn't question the Scotland players' desire and commitment to. Um, the the way that they played right up until the last minute where you know and, and then you know they got the the last minute try and i think it, that paid off this week because they tightened things up so when it's a, when when you've got that commitment in a tight game and your heads aren't going dropping that's a good thing so they didn't let the heads drop against italy and it would be nobody would have blamed them i don't think given the way the score was going if if they had done and i think that's that's what's seen them through into this game because when you're in a tight game and you've got that mentality of we're not going to let our heads drop even if we feel like we're under that pressure. And God, we've seen how many times have we seen Scotland men's team or Embro or Glasgow crumble under similar pressure. But yeah. I don't I don't think that's the case with 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 the Scotland women's team. Is is they really seem to have a and never that kind of like never say that never let your head drop, even if you're getting it on the end of it, an absolute drubbing, they'll play till the end. And that that repays itself when you're in games like this. We've we've seen it actually for if we think back quite a few years now, we have seen that you know, obviously we've given very recent examples there, but my mind immediately kind of jumped back to the England game uh, a few years ago where you know, Scotland they stuck at it. They were they, they were against a, a you know, we've talked about this in the past, England are a fully professional team. Um you know, they were World Cup champions at the time. It's it's a massive ask, but Scotland gave them a fright and gave them a scare. Yes, it was for 20 minutes, but they then stuck at it for the rest of the game. And yes, they were overpowered by a better team, but we'd seen that, we saw that, and I remember us talking on the pod after it, actually, and being like, well, that was the most heartening thing. It was like the, the fear stuck at it. And I think that that's a, that's a trait of the side. And credit goes to... Well, credit goes to everyone within the squad that's kind of promoting that attitude. But you know, obviously, the leadership have to have to kind of drive that as well. And you know, it's it's just amazing credit to everyone involved. I think I wonder whether or not because they've talked a lot about this mentality of looking for the small wins within a game, and and sometimes I think with game where they're playing opposition like England, and you know that you're up against professionals, and and really you're going into a game knowing that you, you're on a hiding to nothing. <clears throat> But if you're trying to find the small wins within a game, then when it comes to the games that you can win and are winnable, then that sees you through because you're not then you're not. I think we've seen certainly other Scottish teams in the past focused on the result, and that you know that that that's a dangerous thing to be. If you if you if you focused on the result, then everything goes to pot. If you if you focused on the incremental wins, on the let's get the next line out, let's make that next tackle. That builds to something more than we need to. This is a must-win game. I've got to make sure the next thing I do counts. If you, it's just I'm going to make my next tackle. I'm going to make the next line. And they've talked about that before. That's what they aim for, and it seems to be working, Craig. Yeah, very much so. You know, you've got to look at, um, you know, that extra. What what's that extra one percent you can do in, in this game, um, and 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 just work on that. And and but you know, there's a lot of people out. You know, I can hear them already. People out there saying. Because, because, oh, it's only Spain. Um, because if hang, hang on a minute, because we we are naturally thinking of the men's game and and thinking of Sp- Sp- Spain's men's game, we automatically go, oh, it's only Spain. You have to remember that Spain uh, women are 
a, a very very decent outfit um and uh, and 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 are well thought of within the the women's rugby circle so it, well yes yeah, i mean scotland have been on the end of some pretty heavy defeats from spain in the past yeah, absolutely absolutely um so you know uh, and that's for those that don't know women's rugby um very well the, the, that's where we're getting these fantastic games because we're seeing other rugby powers coming into uh, into the um, uh, into the World Cup, whereas where that you know you don't normally associate with rugby, which is a fantastic thing as well. Yeah, I think what's interesting is you've got <clears throat> the the gap. I think is closing from from kind of five downwards, five to ten. The gap's closing. I think you, you'll always have yeah. your Englands and New Zealands. Yeah. And Canada and France are always going to be the big teams in in women's rugby because they're well funded yeah. outfits. I mean, there's all sorts of issues with the way Canada, Canadians rugby, women's rugby has been run. Yeah. Um, but th- those are always been the big four. But but certainly Scotland are closing the gap on countries like Spain and even Ireland and Wales. Mm. Um, so these, the, you know, the, the, these results have been coming and building to, them and it's great to see them kind of finally happen. I'm excited. I'm excited for the weekend. I think. Uh, I think this this island game is going to be a really interesting thing. Yeah. It's going to be a I really, th- really interesting. I think the bam for me is that I, I kind of agree. It goes with what John was saying. Really, is I could still see some moments of of kind of lapses in defence, mm. and I think that's that's what needs to be tightened up on the the attack. I mean, I don't think I think anybody's watched Scotland women in the last few years would say that Scotland women haven't really got a problem with their attack necessarily. You know, they've they've got some phenomenal players there. They all seem to play for one another, and the, they all seem to understand what what each other's doing. It's it's just marrying that to the defence. That's the next step for them. And there were still moments where there was a couple. I you know that first Spain try was was quite soft. There were people slipping off tackles again. Yeah. But you know, again, we we know that you know Spain are a very good women, a good good, a good side when it comes to women's rugby. Um. I thought Hannah, Hannah Smith. I, I, I thought she she had a really good game. I think the like her. I really like her and, and Lisa Thompson as a centre partnership. I think that that's always worked really well. And then um, Jenny Maxwell at the scrum half. I know um, Murray McDonald did um, played a lot of rugby last year for Scotland Nine, and we talked on the podcast. I think about kind of her passing technique and maybe some of the slow delivery. And you know, it, it's made a difference. I would say having Jenny Maxwell at nine. That the certainly the, the speed of ball that's coming off the base of the scrum and the base of the rucks is is significantly changed. And that's not to say that you know it's, Mary McDonald will get better. She's very young. She's a new player. She was kind of thrown in the deep end. I mean, God, she played in that win against France, so she can't be doing that yeah. badly. But <laughs> no. th- there's a noticeable difference, I think, when when Jenny Maxwell's playing. And you know, Mary McDonald's got a lot to like about her game, but Jenny Maxwell, I think, has has helped Scotland with that speed of delivery, and that helps with the attack. That has that. That's been the that for me. That's been the issue. We've always been incredible. We've been incredibly strong in the forwards, um, uh, but we have been slightly slower and 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 delivery of the passes or the accuracy of the passes. Some of the kicking as well. Uh, not not kicking at goal, but ball and ball and hand kicking. Um, so for me, um, uh, it's it's great to see the ball being used and used really really well. Yeah. Any more belters and bams from the game for either of you? You want to mention before no. we move on? <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm. I've got no bams at all. I was. I was. I was pleased with what was going on. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the guess the only bam is it's Ireland, isn't it? And we know how these crunch games in, in any Scottish rugby goes with when we play Ireland. So. There, I really hope we don't fall in the classic trap of just building ourselves up and getting excited and then getting ground to death by them. I think the difference, though, is that within the first 10 minutes of Scotland men playing Ireland, if things weren't going their way, you can see how the rest of that game is going to go. Yeah. yeah. That, does, that doesn't happen with Scotland women because they'll play to the end yep. regardless of what's happening. I think if they've... They've clearly worked on the defence because they tightened up. After that first Spain try, you could see they tightened up. If they can do that from the from the kickoff, it's going to be a very close and tight game. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. and I, I think also the as we've just been talking about with the attack, I think um, uh, I think we can hopefully open up holes with Ireland and 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 and, and get through them. Um, and uh, I think Ireland have got their hands full this weekend. Yeah. We should just say we should just have a standing item that Jade Conkle is amazing, but I think that's just oh, a standing yeah. item. We've not mentioned it, but we just it's a standing item. I'll, I'll funny, it in there. I, I don't think any of us wanted to mention it because we're all we're going to actually we're going to talk about this and other stuff, and it's like you know Jade Conkle is it's like it's like the the most obvious thing to say that oh she was amazing again. I didn't want anyone sat there going they've not mentioned Jade Conkle. It's like. <laughs> 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 That's, that's usually, it's usually, uh, yeah, it's usually me that's meant to, you know, Jade, Jade's just brilliant. Just that. Strength, strength oh, yeah. I mean, and that... contact. Strength and contact. Just that, boom, that's... ball out. Oof. That kind of, the, the, the setup for the, was it the, I can't wish try it was, where she just kind of spun around and fed the ball back. It was just, oh, woof. Absolutely. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, yeah. So that's that's the Scotland v Spain game. Um, we wish them best luck against Ireland at the weekend. We'll cover that next week on the podcast. Um, we'll do pick of the six next. Um, I've still not got. I need. I've got a few weeks left to get that the bloody <laughs> jingle sorted for this. I've it's got for my birthday. For my birthday. Hey, good news, good news, jingle <gasps> fans. I've bought a MIDI keyboard with a drum oh. machine. <laughs> <laughs> just when you thought they'd drop the jingles he buys himself a keyboard and a drum machine so hopefully that i'm hoping to do some sort of crazy remix of the blankety blank theme tune so just imagine that with the pick of the six over the top so yeah just, just for the last the last couple of games of the game that's it <laughs> the ready season. for the fight for the fight ready for the ready. final <laughs> so yeah pick of the six then um what i mean crikey crikey moses what a weekend that was for super six it really i mean you know we talked we've talked and it's been lovely to see this tournament kind of develop in front of our eyes because it is this feels new because i think that it's not been used in the way it was set up to be used because covid's changed that you've got players who've dropped down from professional level who are stepping up and playing really well you've got guys i mean not so much now because i think a lot of the players have returned to the the pro teams i think yeah. pre, you know for pre-season but just the the standard of the rugby on show and the i think the entertainment value as well you can't fall it's a bit like you were saying before craig with the you know with with scotland versus spain and, and scotland women if you're the kind of person that doesn't enjoy modern professional rugby or international rugby and thinks it's just kick tennis and you can't get into it, go and watch the Super Six because yep. yeah. that's the rugby you're after. It does exist. It is out there, the rugby that you want. And it's bloody entertaining to watch. I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's Bulls versus Southern Knights for the final for me. I don't see it going any other way. Yeah, two very contrasting styles though as well. Like the Southern Knights, I, I mean, if you were to, uh, if you want a pick of the six, Christ, they can maul, can't they? Oh yeah. my goodness, that the the final rolling maul try they scored, where they're, they're, I think it was it ended up being a penalty try they got given. Yeah, um, it was, yeah, and it was. I felt bad oh, for the lad no, who actually scored it. Though. He, sc- he scored yeah, it. And, <laughs> you're like, come on, anyway, just give him it. Ah, uh, absolutely, but. I mean, that is, if we were to look at that, that is man-shaming territory, how fast that is moving. They are destructive up front. And then on the other side, you've got Air, who play some very nice stuff. Uh, they're, they're strong in the forwards as well, but they play some lovely stuff in the back. So yeah, Some of the uh, offloading from Air this weekend was absolutely beautiful. And then the next level to that was Sterling County with the offloading off. They were, well, they were, yeah, they were, my, that's, you know, that's my pick in the six for, is, is Stirling County coming back at the end there. And that, that was a fabulous moment for them. Um, and but again, it's should, 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 um, uh, sorry, was it Borough Muir? Was it Borough Muir? Yeah, yeah. 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 Should, should Borough Muir have got so many points against them if you under, you know, because again, yeah. defense has been a bit, a, a bit kind of. 
Well, we said great, we said yeah. early on, didn't we? We said we're Sterling. Is Sterling Sterling were kind of our pick of the top three? We said you know looking at Bulls, <clears throat> well maybe top four. He said I think we said Bulls, Knights, Watsonians were the top going to be the top three. Yep. Sterling were there or thereabouts, and then Barmuse and Harriet's bottom from the first couple of rounds. But I mean, you're right, Craig. It's not you know should Sterling have have they've got everything there that they need to have, but. It's they've got all the notes, but not necessarily in the right order. We're still, yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean, they you mean, to... They're playing punk rock right now. They're not really. Sh- they're they're just playing lots of really loud notes, and they're not really sure what song it's going to make. But it's going to. It's just going to be fun. It'll be but, interesting. I think it'll be interesting to see them next season. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, the, the neek, if they're going to play open rugby like they're playing, need cut their grass a bit more because it's far too long. <laughs> um, but, I but, uh, but, <laughs> but on the other side of things, I, I, that, that, there was some fantastic offload and some fantastic passes, but also. Aye, but who's um, at inside, se- inside centre? I mean, that's just hereditary. Uh, yes. Who, Archie Very Russell, true. Finn's brother. Yeah, absolutely. A couple, couple of so, out the back offloads and all sorts. You're like, oh, Archie, come on. And he quite he looks, t- at an angle, he looks like Finn as well. And it is a bit like, what's yeah. going on I've here? Totally <laughs> forgotten, I've forgotten the guy's name, but the, the, he was. I think he's uh, he's Irish and he's, he's the fullback. Um, cl- uh, Chloe, Chlo- Chlo- uh, anyway, it's gone out. He's got a nice moustache anyway. Um, and he's <laughs> he's really come across. He's He's been quiet, quietly just... Performing and he and he, I think he scored on the weekend and he was, uh, you know, he's he's quite an impressive um, uh, player. Um, so I think the you know, Sterling, I think if they if they keep if they keep going, if they can get their defence sorted out, they've got a good chance next season. I think Boromir for me are are in that category, but I think they've aside from um, Barreto who plays the scrum half. Yeah. I really like him. You said before, I really like him. I think they've got some good yeah. forwards. They just don't seem to everything else about them just feels a little bit meh and a little bit club and that's not down they just they need the 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 players that they have outside of they've got a couple of exceptional players and that's what's dragging them through yeah and and everybody else and i think this is probably i think it's a, a kind of pandemic situation that the players that they have Got might have the skills but haven't been able to get up to that standard, or they haven't to plug a few gaps for guys that might play Premiership level, but but can't make up. And whatever you say, it, it is you can see that is a massive step up from Premiership now to Super yeah. Six. I, they, I, they, I, they, I, they, they, but they 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 have spells where they play really well and they play some rough, lovely rugby, and the forwards can have dominance, and they've got a few good players, but they don't. It just it's fits and spots, and it doesn't feel particularly cohesive at times. I kind of put it together. I can only put, you know, I put it like it's as, it's almost as if they've got themselves a brand new Lamborghini, and they're one of those guys that that takes it out in the road and uh, on YouTube and plants it in a in a lamp post the first time he dumps a clutch. <laughs> it just it's it's one of those situations where they, they they've got the they've got all the they've got some fantastic facilities they've got some fantastic players they just can't put it together at the moment and every time they try to put it together something goes wrong um and it's a real shame for them because i think they've they've got they've got all those things well maybe it's not a shame maybe it, maybe you need to look at the coaches i don't know but i think just as you say covid etc 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 has kind of come along and just put us put a, a spoke in their wheels you know yeah. We've also got the worst, the worst strip in the Super Six, so that might be. No, issue. no, no. Stirling Counties is worse than Burnham. <clears throat> no, 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 no. I'm not having that. The, the colours in Burnham is dreadful. Tartan on shorts is just a no for me, though. That's the problem. Yeah, no, I, don't, I, I agree, but I think no. I think the Burnham. I was watching it earlier on, and I was like, I was probably on fashion watch a wee bit, and you know what? The, the red, does it, the red, the white, black. The good shirt. The test for me of a good shirt is: does it look good with jeans? Right. Because you take it out of the context, take it out of the context of a, right. of rugby, of guys in the pitch playing rugby, would would that look good with a pair of jeans on a Saturday in a pub? So what you're saying is we need the Super Six teams to send us all a shirt and we'll oh, model I... them on a Patreon special. That's it. I think not with, even a Patreon special. Jeans. We'll do this on the pub. Hey, if any of the Super Six teams are watching, you want us to wear some Super Six shirts, send them our way. Let's we'll rate them. We'll do uh, absolutely. We'll happily uh, rate Super Six shots. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what, I would love some. 
I'd I'd be up for some Southern Knights merch. Ma, ma, tell me ma, you ma. get me the right way. <laughs> These Southern Knights, ma, ma, they do. They do Their turn shots ahead. No time. And there you go. Any opportunity we had to get any merch has just gone. Has just gone. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, boys. I was really looking forward to my Sterling County shirt. But what have you done? <laughs> well, I think I already shot that in the foot by saying that their uh, tartan shorts are absolutely honking. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. We've still got, hey, look, we've still got the Ayrshire Bulls. Look, your kits are nice. Look, it's but, black. You can't go wrong with it. Can't go big, wrong with it. Big issue with Ayrshire Bulls, right? And this is, I don't know if this is the place for this or if it's like extreme hands in the ruck or something, right? Robbie Nairn was wearing 19. What is that about? I'm not having this. I'm not happy. It, <laughs> oh, just actually, like I was, I was physically, I was watching it and I was just like fizzing. Like somebody just get my winger shirt, just sort it out. Just like it's just a mistake. Don't worry, just change it. Maybe so you were looking through the shirts and just found the only one that could fit. Yeah, I know, but that that's fine at like West Four level. <laughs> I mean, it makes this the one thing that annoys me. I, I'll, I'll come, I'm going to come on to that in a minute. We've got a couple of comments about um, shots. So Magnus Peacock says the Bears have the best kit, and I'll hear no word against it. I'm sorry. Air Magnus, Bull, oh. Airship Bulls have the best <laughs> kit. Burmy is not bad. I agree with you, Magnus. Thank you. Uh, Martin Bell says, any uh, chance of Southern Knights moving to red and white hoops at all? <laughs> Who knows? We'll put put that in a suggestion box. The, the only, I mean, this is a daft thing about rugby. This is a, this is a side bit of a, a side issue, and maybe again, this is a hands in the ruck issue, but the. The insistence on rug of rugby of doing the one to fifteen shots, and not just giving everybody a bloody squad number because that would just be easier. Because then you have to the wastage of having to get how many different sizes of three shirts to fit all your props or different size twos to fit True. your hookers. If you, if you think about actually, just thinking about Edinburgh, Edinburgh for a, a for a wee minute, and this isn't a criticism, Craig. So just no, you, I'm just, you waiting. just relax. I'm just waiting. I'm thinking about like a few seasons ago where you had um, Blair Kinghorn playing fullback, Darcy yeah. Graham playing fullback, and you probably had others playing fullback as well. And it's like Darcy and Blair are very, very. I mean, that's opposite scales of the spectrum, isn't it? Like they're they're definitely different body shapes. That must have been a pain. Like, and I know it's at pro level, it's fine, but you're right. Actually, even at this lower level. It's probably a bit stupid that we have to, you know, stick to the numbers. What, but what it happens did annoy on a me. Thursday? <laughs> what happens on a Thursday, right? This is, here's here's something. On a Thursday, Richard Cockrell phones up and says, "I'm naming Blair at fly half, and I've never named it fly half before." But he's starting. This is what happened last season. Like and all our and and you got the kit man thinking all our other fly halves are roughly the same size, so it's been no bother. But now we've got to now I've got to go and find a shirt and iron on the number ten to the back of it before Friday or Saturday kickoff. I mean, give him a squad number; it's fine. You just you know you I recycle am, the I, same shirt until it well, runs it off. Cami, I'm sorry to say, uh, no one is getting me. Well, actually, a lot of nobody can get me out of a three shirt usually because it's far too tight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nobody's getting me out a three shirt ever again. My my, my lucky number is three, and three is my shirt, and that's the way. Right, it is. but that's that, it. That's you fine. just have to. That's... You have to fight for it, Craig. That's, that's the start of the season. Then. <laughs> Throw everyone in a ring. Because just... nobody's wearing nobody's wearing the three shirt after me anyway, because it'll drain I... them. That's, that's <laughs> the, you, you, you're sorted then. So that's your. I'm, actually, I think you're you're onto something here, Cam. Let's start the campaign down. We are wanting squad numbers for rugby. Squad numbers for numbers. If you want the three shot, that's fine. You just have to fight for it pre-season with everybody else. Was it not um, Leicester Tigers all those years ago the when they used letters. to sew the had letters and they used, I, when you used yeah. to sew the numbers on the number patches onto the back of the yeah, shirts? We we'd we'd letters for a um, we had a centenary uh, match of, um, between like Butte and another club um, and. There was letters on the shirt, and I was freaked out by this. It, this this confused me very, very much. I'm like, not, not thrilled about this. Yeah. See, it all goes back. The problem is, it all goes back to it's like the first president of the SRU, I think, or one the set, maybe the second one who was stood at a Calcutta Cup match, and the king turned him and says, um, "Why do they not have sh- shirt numbers on their back?" And he said, "Because they're not cattle." 
<laughs> so it's taken hundreds of years to get to the point where we'll even have shirt numbers, let alone squad numbers. So yeah, just just anyway. think of the marketing opportunities, though. Like if you were to, you know, obviously football has done this, and I've I've been shouted at in the past for saying we can learn stuff from football. But think of the marketing opportunities for the kind of world class players out there, the guys that are the the, the Instagram, Russell Ten, pin, you got FR Ten. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to put pin in pin in this because I've got views on this for our um, United Rugby Championship uh, preview that we'll do in a minute. Of course, yeah. Bring up uh, Martin Bell's comment. He says, "Is there any kind of SIU directive encouraging the Super Six clubs to adopt the Scottish way?" It might partly explain why it's been very entertaining so far. I th- I think there's. Uh, they're, they're probably encouraged to, but I don't think there's that level of. Um, well, it, there is a club level, I know. Yeah, we work through the Scottish blueprint, um, and yeah. the blueprint, the blueprint is very much a um, create space, um, a fast pace, moving game, and so I guess if if I would expect um, uh, it going through that it is all the way through, including including the Super Six. But but if you if you're creating a competition from scratch. And again, I'm touching this in the, when we talk about the URC in a minute, but you you want it to be entertaining. So that that blueprint, the Scottish blueprint, is an entertaining blueprint. So if you're exactly. doing a new yeah. product and you were to take it out to a market and say to people, "Here's here's new rugby, here's a new brand of rugby in Scotland. We want you to watch it." Nobody's going to watch a three nil slugfest in the mud on a Saturday night. It needs to be something that's going to draw in. It's going to draw in the people who watch. Um, you know, Edinburgh and Glasgow who don't have a club, for example. Yeah. And it's yeah. going to draw in people who follow club rugby and Scotland but don't have an interest in pro rugby. You need to pull them in. And the way you need to do that is to create entertaining rugby. The one thing I think my kind of pick of the six this weekend, I think you saw a little bit with Southern Knights and particularly with Air this weekend, is we finally got that ruthlessness that we've been talking about. Yeah. That kind of utter... And it... and. I think I was worried that maybe we were asking too much because I thought it might undermine the ent- the kind of entertainment value of the competition. But that those two games were entertaining and it was just great to see two teams being utterly ruthless and saying, I mean, with Southern Knights, there was a lot of patience. They weren't getting the scores early on, but they were dominating the game. And then the score just came. It was disappointing they didn't get the bonus point try, I don't think. But then with Air... There was, you know, the, the, there was that kind of moment of scramble defence where they just completely, you know, turned it around and to nil a team. Yeah. In in modern rugby, oh. the way that they did is just, I mean, it's unheard of. But that marrying that running rugby with also that defenseless defence ruthlessness was what we've been waiting to see. And I think when it's fine, when it was finally there, it wasn't as horrendous as I thought it might be. <laughs> it wasn't as dull as I was worried it might be. Yeah, no. yeah. I think I think you, 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 that's the whole thing, though. I think I think if we're playing to the Scottish rugby blueprint as such, the teams that that are switched on and say, "Yeah, we're going to play to that blueprint, but we're going to have a you know hard as nails pack doing the set piece," um, you know, the and it showed with the Southern Knights with their their mall work. It showed with the Ayrshire Bulls. Um, they have a, you know, they are not afraid to go into contact. That's for sure. And uh, and I think um, that the, the ability to, if it, even if it just stupid little things like if it rains, to tighten it up a little bit, and to, and uh, you know, you still have the flow in rugby, but you've got this ability to 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 pick and go and to to put the rug, the ball up the jumper and take it take it to them. I mean, they've got that ability to do it. So yeah, it, it is. I just love the Southern Knights control. I just. Yeah. I, I I I really that's why I've probably pinned my pinned my um my my, my uh, reset to them and say I'm I'm going to go go that way. I think they are they really have the control to hold the Ayrshire Bulls and then maybe take them out to dry at the last minute. You know. Yeah, I think I'm struggling because I'm, I'm between. I love the way the Ayrshire Bulls <clears> play. <throat> mm. I can't quite bring myself to love a team that plays in Melrose. I think that's the problem of it. <laughs> it's the old border rivalry. It's like if they're not if they if they were representing the borders, I could probably just about kind of bring myself to say, do you know what? Here's a team that's representing the borders, but that that's not the way they've gone with it. I think yeah, I'll... and the, and they've also turned the green yards into a, into a, a four or five G pitch, and uh, yeah. it, it's a bit it's a bit kind of <gasps> it's almost like uh, you know it's it's let, just awful. 
Let's hold. Let's 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 hold. We'll save that for hands in the rock. Anyway, that might come up. <laughs> that's 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 our pick of the six for this weekend, uh, for this week. So um, still a couple more rounds to go until the finals. So again, if you if you haven't been watching, it is it's well worth catching. Um, and if not not you know if you can't catch a game and then the highlights of the rest is well well worth watching. Absolutely. Um, so the return of well, it's not the return. I don't know what to call this. We've got a new brand new competition. I think we need to kind of say this is this is year one. We've got a brand new competition now for professional rugby in scotland so we're part of now the united rugby championship or the urc not the ultimate rugby championship we finally got it right the ultimate the united rugby championship <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did it. The, the ultimate united fighting rugby the championship. ultimate yeah which which for, for those that don't know and i know some people that, that listen to this podcast because you may, may, may not have caught up with this we've now got Teams from South Africa, and it's not the it's not the piddly wee tiddler teams. It's the proper full super, former Super Rugby franchises playing in South Africa. Four of them We've got the Irish provinces, got the Welsh teams, and the Irish and the Scottish clubs. It's the the way the format works. And again, we've covered this on the podcast before. I've probably still got the video saved somewhere, but <laughs> Scotland are the Scottish teams. Glasgow and Ember in a pool with Bennett and Zebra. The Welsh teams are in a pool with each other. Irish teams are in a pool with each other. South African teams are within a pool within each other. I think you play everybody in your pool twice and everybody else once. Yes, that's right. Yep. And we end up with some sort of final table. Within that, there are many competitions. So you've got the 1872, obviously. Until today, I didn't know that Scotland, the Scottish teams were playing for the Scottish-Italian Shield. Yes. Oh. Yes. That's, that's, How exciting. So. so this this is a bit of a this this was a, a yeah they played this card a few years ago when it was pro 14 and the do you remember they used to do obviously they used to do the festive derbies and what they done was they they mixed up the festive derbies so that glasgow played edinburgh and then played the italian side at, at yeah. uh, new year and it was they were saying it's that the Scottish Italian rivalry. It's like no, it's just because we've both got two teams in the league. Come on, like don't 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 try and kid us. But yes, we are playing for the for the Scottish Italian Shield, and that has sparked multiple debates online as to what this should be called. I think should the, the if it, no this this would this this only works if you're in a very um, in a small area. But the Jacopazzi's Cup, anyone that's had Jacopazzi's ice cream in uh, I'm off yep. will know. I, I, Jack I, Cup. I, I was a big fan of the Cup de Capaldi. Uh, I thought that that kind of worked quite well because you know it's it's embracing everything that's going on here. Um, so I, I thought the, that was quite good. Tommaso Allen Cup, you know the Tommy Allen Cup. <laughs> he's he's, Tommy he's, now, hey, he's yeah, Tommy he's now. Tommy, he's moved back. He's now Tommy. Now he's back in England, I suppose. But uh, what, fair, fair play to Tommy boy. He was bloody brilliant at the weekend. He was good. He was very. Yeah, good. I tell you, one of my absolute heroes growing up. Pasquale Bruno played for Hearts centre oh, midfield. Absolute yes. at the animal. <laughs> the Pasquale the animal, Bruno right. threw the Pasquale Bruno shield. Oh, there you go. So I mean, anyone from the United Rugby Fighting Championship that's watching this and wants to take our ideas for the uh, for, for for the for the cup name, then please give us. I hope it's. I hope it is actually a cup as well. I hope there's like an actual shield that the guys get to hold up. By guys yeah. in Glasgow. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> oh, right, well, yeah. <laughs> so we'll let's do. Should we do the teams first? Now we we'll talk. We can bit of a talk about the competition as a whole. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to do this. To be fair, I've, John, you've been naughty because you've had a dig at Craig. So I'm going to take <laughs> the dad approach to this. <laughs> Craig, let's start with Embra. Um, have there been many in? Comings into Edinburgh this season, well, or been, as many as you'd like. For for me, um, you know, I I think that for me the biggest sign has been Mike Blair. Yeah, I think I think that's been our biggest signing. I think um, I think I, I'm excited by that. Um, obviously, 
the the second coming of Ben Velikot has been uh, has been a, a fantastic sign as well, and he proved himself on the weekend. Got player of the match, and um, you know, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see how he gets along. Uh, Immelman is is definitely going to DC. Um, I'm going to say this; it's heresy, I know, but uh, Kinghorn has got a job on his hand with him, yep. you know, uh, because Immelman is, you know, you thought Blair Kinghorn was a top, a big lad. This boy is massive, um, uh, and at fullback, he, he he seemed to play very very well. Um, so yeah, um, I, I I think we, personally, I think we've got it just about right. We're we're we've signed players that are a little bit under the radar. And people are saying, you know, for example, um, James Lang, people are, you know, he's very much a, a Marmite player. Some people have said he's, uh, why have we signed him? He's, you know, he's, 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 he's not been very good in a Scotland shirt, but, you know, he's not been very good in a Harlequin shirt. But actually, I think he'll, he should shine in an Edinburgh shirt. Um, Velikot, again, people are fairly hard on him as well. So uh, I think. Well, he is, I mean, I think you got to look like James Lang has not been bad in a Scotland shirt. Right, he's not been great. He's not like set the heather fire. And do you know who else didn't for the first few games? Chris Harris. Exactly. Exactly. And that's Hugh the Jones kind of thing I see with James. The James yep. With James yep. Lang, I think James Lang is a Chris. He's not put really done much wrong in a Scotland shirt. He hasn't been phenomenal, but Still to play international chance. rugby, to to, well, to play international rugby and not put a foot wrong and do okay, yeah, is pretty is a pretty high standard. Because yeah. you you found one in National Rugby. I think Ben Valicott as well. You've got to bear in mind, this is a guy who Eddie Jones wanted to play for England. And, and like that or not, in, you know, it, England are a bigger draw for a player than Scotland. I know that's I probably mean, heresy to say that on a Scottish I mean, rugby it's, podcast. It's, but I, it's you know, easy cap just now, though, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I think, I think, I think for, for me, I think, I think, you know, with, with Blair coming in, Velicott coming in, um, the log jam for us, I would say, will probably be at 10. Um, yeah. And we need to see where we're going to be with 10. I saw, uh, obviously, um, Kinghorn, I think, was playing 10 at the weekend or had a, had a pop at it anyway. And, and maybe that's the way Maybe that's the way they're looking at it. Um, for me, uh, you know, Mark Bennett is just, at, you know, he he's... he's He's yet to convince me. I think he's. I think when he was with Matt Scott, he was phenomenal. But he's he's missing that centre partnership. And if we if we can, you know, if, if James Lang is the uh, is the answer, then then great. But you also have to remember, you know, we may be fairly quiet. You, you may have been fairly quiet on the signings. But if you look at some a some of the signings we brought in, but also where Edinburgh was and who we have. You know, um, I'm not going to get through this podcast without mentioning Pierre Schumann. Um, we've got, uh, you know, two, three phenomenal hookers. Um, McBurnley, I think, will come, will, will grow. I think we've got uh, McAnally and we've got Dave Cherry, who will, who, who are, are proving themselves very, very good. We've got, um, uh, you know, a, a fairly big engine room in the, uh, with Gilchrist and. Um, uh, in a, uh, you know, in our second rows, <sighs> we're fairly balanced. We've got we've got the back row. Everybody would pay money for. So and uh, yeah, you would come on if we if you got the hey, if you hey, got the option for having either Hamish Watson or Jamie Ritchie, you'd take someone's arm off. I tell you what, John, back row, like genuinely, and I know, like I know, I try, I try to be impartial and slag off both Glasgow and Edinburgh. That's how I show my impartiality, but. The a, a, on paper a back row of Richie Watson and Mata. Anybody in in France, England, yes, anywhere else would. in the world would would pay through the nose for that back row. They would, but that's okay. a three hundred. That's a that that is. It's a, a box close, office. That's a seven hundred and fifty grand a year every you know per player back row. That is a big money in France. It's, um, it's a good back row. It's a good yeah, back row. Yeah. But I think, again, uh, the difference is uh, <clears throat> how how good are they in comparison to the opposition? And we'll come on to Glasgow in a minute. But I I I I totally accept that your back row is probably better. But I don't think it's as much better as we're thinking. But I think a... it's I think for me, and this is this is and we'll come on to this. I think for me, out of all Ember, out of every 
facet of Ember game, Ember's game, I think the South African teams pose a massive risk to the Scottish teams this season. Mm. But it, yep. it's like it's like nothing we, we that they've ever come across. I think the, the the positive is that aside from one weekend so far, the the URC is not going to clash with international windows, which is a yep. good move, which means yep. the players are available. Yeah. For Embra, that back row is as good as anything that South the South African teams will throw at at, at, at them. The rest, the rest of the Embra squad, I think, you know, that there's there'll be some frights along the way, and we'll see the you know, it'll sort out the men from the boys. But the, the Embra back row, I think, is up there with anything the South Africans have got. You also have to think about you know uh, are there going to be times you know are they. Are they going to bring Khaleesi along with them? Or is, you know, is is he going to make the journey? Um, and it's the same with the whole. It's the same whole Sexton question: Is Sexton going to actually go to South Africa to play down in South Africa? Will Will he travel? It's it, those are those are the question marks. Because I, I see, I'm I'm really excited to go and watch um, uh, the Sharks play um, at, at, at the new at the ERS. The problem I have with that is I don't want to get all excited and go down and end that the named players are still sitting in South Africa and the rest of you know I, and, and that's a good that's a big question that's going to be yeah I think we'll we'll come on to that in a minute yeah because that's a wider question let's go to Glasgow then John John Glasgow a, a decent bit of business I think I suppose a, a lot of the players kind of came in towards the end of last season really I mean you, you nabbed a couple of Ember boys which is Glasgow's one. That's what always happens. Oh! You tell you to be the couple of Ember boys, you turn them round, you make them slightly better. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That is that's our game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, no, Glasgow have recruited well. Um it's it's felt like the most balanced recruitment cycle we've had in quite some time. Yeah, Duncan uh, Weir was an absolute steal. Oh, fantastic steal. <laughs> you know fine well I'm not a Duncan Weir fan, so don't don't even start, son. That was a panic by um Ross Thompson for me is a much better player. I think Ross Thompson will will Dunky Weir will probably be getting scalps uh, for a wee bit. Um, Who's the I Argentinian think, boy you've got at ten as well? Uh, you've got... uh, Mio, Mio, Miotti, um, yeah. who has looked um, behind a, a scrabbling Argentine pack has looked um, early thin. Let's see, that would be my my best description of it. Um, Magic of bag of snakes. Oh yeah, just as liable yeah, to skin skin the back row, chip and chase, and then score under the post as he has to throw an intercept and put his team eighty behind, uh, behind their own post. So yeah, but again, potential. He's a he's, he's a very talented footballer. He look, looks he does look like a, a decent signing. Concern would be, I think he's more of I think he's more of an idea for next season actually, um, because it's going to take time. With the Argentinian boys in particular, because they're off with Argentina just now for the Rugby Championship, you're coming in late. You're then looking at kind of a pre-season, mid-season. You're probably talking Christmas before these guys are even kind of up to speed. So I wouldn't worry too. And actually, it's a concern for me because I think that you've got um, Sebastian Cancellari, Who's come in uh, in the wing, and he looks an absolute prospect as well. And isn't he's, isn't he, a cancellary the guy that is that, is that is that the name for a mafia fixer? I, I hope so. I hope so. Conciliary, Conciliary, yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 So this is a cancellary, not a conciliary. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I mean, I think I think yeah, you're absolutely right. Glasgow's backs now. Um, Tui Pelotu looks looks very good in the centre mm. as well. Um, there's a lot of pace in that back, um, the, the sort of the backs now, which maybe towards the end the end of kind of your Tommy Seymour, Nico Matalawu era, the pace had gone. But you know there was there was a rugby brain there, but there's nothing that kind of gets past pure pace in the backs. Is there really? Yeah. That's what you want them there. I, for. I think that probably there was a period, and I think one thing that. I think the Embra suffered when the tens were away on Scotland duty. I think yeah. Glasgow have struggled since Finn's gone to plug yeah. that gap. But now you've got Ross Thompson at Glasgow. Yeah. Now that Embra seem to have at least two, if not three, reasonable prospects at ten in Yako, Charlie Savian, Blair Kingham. 
he's not done bad at 10, let's face it, Craig. That's, that's for me, kind of has been the missing link for the pro, two pro teams over the past two seasons. And, and both of them seem to have plugged that gap and then some. Yeah, I think, I think you know, Savio is uh, Savala. Savala. I, Savala. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more out of him. Um, I think uh, he's going to need he's he's going to need the time. Uh, I think I think it's the same the same. He's he. I'm worried he's going to drop drop into the same way that Charlie Shield went, and you know he's only getting a small amount of time on the field, and then he tries to overplay to try and make a point. Um, so my my I would like to see him start a few of the games, and and that's the only thing that's kind of missing is the fact that the they're not get those those games that um they all the internationals were away playing in the autumn etc um you could then bring on your young lads and 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 give them a full 80 minutes now it was sometimes it was horrendous rugby but it was it, it gave them match you know gameplay and match time so it'll be interesting to see how um how it works but no would it, I, I i agree with john i think it's going to be i think really for Gla- glasgow have had their Mind you, we had a poor season, but they had their poor poor air season last year. Last year, um, and they're starting to build. I always go working three years cycles, and I think I think Edinburgh are going to be the same. They're going to take three years. This will be our start with Mike Blair starting to change the, a few bits and pieces and working away and seeing who, what players are going to be the right thing. He's got he'll he'll be out signing people next season. You know, because there'll be a certain amount of people move out because they don't fit in with Mike Blair's Blair's way as well. Um, and so you'll get this year that will be we'll see where we are. You'll see an improvement. I hope. I hope, and then we'll hopefully build from there. Yeah. Can we talk? Oh, can we touch on back row before we before we? Go let's go because I've got I want to do, I want to do the last kind of like five minutes on the competition yeah. that we'll and we'll the, so, as a whole and then we'll continue that in the hands in the ruck section. No worries. So so Glasgow Glasgow's back row. Uh, Glasgow have signed um, signed well actually. Uh, obviously at the tail end of last season, uh, Glasgow brought in Rory Darge, yeah. who was utterly manner born to that Glasgow shirt uh, and made. Probably uh, for me, that was why, why Cockrell was fired. Uh, like that, that's why he should have been fired. That was a ridiculous decision from me. But it wasn't. No, the problem. Is, but Ember was stacked in the back row, right? And that's the problem that they had. Actually, I think Glasgow weren't, and that it, it was. It was a way of redressing the balance. I mean, the more you've got, if you're trying to get past Hamish Watson and Jamie Ritchie, who are, let's face it, the two best back rows in yeah. Scottish rugby right now. You, you're not going to get game... T- Rory Darge was not going to get the same game time as he's going to get at Glasgow. Glasgow, to a certain extent, Glasgow needed somebody like Rory Darge and Rory Darge need, needed Glasgow. Yeah, I don't think that's totally Cockrell's to a, fault. To a certain point, to a certain point, because Glasgow did have Tom Gordon tearing up trees at the time. when he But signed. Rory Darge and Tom Gordon together, I mean... But they'll not play together. That's the thing. They won't Why play not? together. Why because not? you've got Why Jack people... Dempsey, an Australian international, who is an absolute ball carrying machine, who will be playing six, and then Darge will be at seven, or Gordon will be at seven. They're both. Yes, yeah, that back. whole thing of having two sevens. Yeah, you, you can't. It, so, Can Dempsey in, in, in play eight? Dempsey could potentially play eight, but then you've got Matt Fagerson, who definitely needs more game time and is continuing to grow as an mm. international talent. So it's it's balancing your resources, but I think Dempsey is the. Dempsey for me is the key now because he comes in and he is that six that we've not had. Glasgow have also been trying some of the second rows at six during the during the summer with a view to potentially mitigating the wonderful decision by World Rugby with the 50-22. Um, so we've been looking at using second rows in the back row as a as another line out option. Um, so Cummings has played at six, and Kieran McDonald played at six. That's a that's an interesting call. He's a big lad uh, to be running about at six. But Cummings, I wouldn't be surprised if we use Cummings at six more this season when Dempsey isn't. Well, I would expect them to interchange more. But Darge and Gordon for me are both out and out sevens, and they'll be competing mm-hmm. for that shirt. I don't think. I don't think Glasgow are going to play the two sevens as much. I love that style of rugby. I think it's great, but. I don't think they play that way. For me, the difference is between, and then we talk about the difference between the back rows. For me, the difference is Ember have a world class back row that can compete with the South African teams. Glasgow potentially have a world class back row, but it's a pan, it's it's a Schrodinger's cat of a back row because we don't know. 
how well it can combine and how well it can play together until it no, starts you're, doing you're, it. You're right. I, I, but but one hundred percent, I think those players that we've all mentioned, the Matt Fergusons, the Tom Gordons, the Rory Darges, the Jack Dempseys, you know, the proof will be in the pudding of how it goes. But on oh, yeah. paper, they have the potential to be world class. I think the difference is that the, the the three that are at Edinburgh that would start every game of their fit are are, are provably world class. And that's the difference. And, at the and I and I don't disagree in the slightest with that. I'm all I'm saying is I don't think the gap is as big as we're maybe suggesting yeah. it is. And it and it and it, and it and it and it probably isn't. And it's just a case of game time and people getting yeah. time under the belts and getting games. I wanted to talk about, about the competition and the way the United Rugby Championship is going. What I think we'll do, because we're over an hour now, we're going to take that into hands in the ruck. What we might do is we might touch on that next week after the first round within the main podcast. We'll come back to some of those talking points for the main pod. Um, what we'll do, though, is we'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much for listening to everybody on the main, um, on the regular podcast. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a little two-minute break, comfort break. Um, hey. That's why we say goodbye. <laughs> if you um, are a patron, you can carry on listening to us on our super secret Facebook page. Um, we'll probably there's normally a kind of like couple of minutes while we go and get ourselves sorted and come back for the discussion. But for the moment, it is goodbye from me and goodbye from John and Craig. Bye, bye, folks. <laughs>